Hi everyone, PV here and welcome to this week's YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to talk about playtesting. In Magic, it is much, much easier to prepare for a tournament if you have a team behind you. So if you have a group of friends or a group of teammates uh, that are all getting together with the same common goal, it is much easier to prepare and to find a good deck and to find the right builds and to learn how matchups go. Right? Uh, it is not impossible to do well if you don't have a team. Some professional players are, are famous for doing that. For example, uh, Shota Yasuka. Uh, I believe he almost never had a team and always did very well. Uh, but it is much easier if you have uh, other people doing it with you. Right? But even then, uh, it is not going to help you as much if you don't know how to approach the testing process. So in this week's video, I'm going to talk about four big mistakes that I see people making with their teams, with their playtesting teams, uh, that are uh, making them not get as much as they possibly could from the experience. Now, those mistakes don't have to happen on a big team, right? Traditionally, uh, the super teams of professional players have 10 or more people. I've had teams of 25 people for, for major tournaments, uh, but you don't need to have this big a team to, to take to heart the advice that I'm gonna give you in this video, right? This is going to apply whether you are a team of 10 or a team of two, right? These are things that you can still dodge to, to improve your experience overall. And if you happen to be a solo player, right? If you don't have a team or you don't have anyone to test with, uh, maybe you will still uh, get some use out of some of those. They won't all apply to you, but some might. The first big mistake to avoid is not communicating. Because when you're on a team, there's a flow of information coming from all sides. And the goal of a team is to get all this information together so that no single person has to acquire all of it. Because it's impossible, right? It is impossible to test every matchup, every card, if you're just one person. It is much more doable if you're spreading the work among, you know, two, four, ten people. But it doesn't count as spreading the work if other people don't have access to your information. If you do work and you don't tell everybody in a clear and concise way, then a lot of the time it's like you've never done the work at all. A lot of the time your work goes ignored and it even has to be duplicated. I've had teammates who were like extremely hardworking. Right? They played a lot of matches, they played with each other, they played on ladder, they played on Magic Online, they played in person, but they weren't very good at communicating stuff, so I never knew what they played. Right, which meant that a lot of the time we just had to do everything that they did all over again because we never knew that they'd done it in the first place. So, for example, people will be like, okay, let's play a session of Mono Red versus Mono Green to see who wins, what the matchup is about. So you go and you spend hours playing that matchup and then we'd, after that we'd go and post the results and someone would be like, oh yeah, I've already played that matchup with you know this other person. I was like, well, but you didn't post it. So we couldn't know that you played, so we had to duplicate your work and play it all over again. Right. So at that point you might as well not have played, right? You, obviously, you're still going to have input. It's still going to be better than if you didn't play it at all, but you could have just saved us a lot of work there. And here, you don't need a very detailed account of everything that happened. You know, oh, on turn two, I missed my land drop. Like, it, it's not like that, right? What you need to do is you need to communicate the important, what you did and what the important conclusions from that were. For, to give you an example, uh, when we were playing Tainted Pact, right, the, the mirror combo in, in Historic, we were like, well, I wonder if Gideon is good enough out of the green-white decks to beat Tainted Pack, right? That was something that we, we wanted to find out. So a group of people played that, and then they made a post, you know, played Axe matches of this matchup, uh, don't think Gideon is good enough, because the the blue-black deck has a lot of removal for Planeswalkers incidentally, right? And that's it, right? That is a perfect post. It takes two lines, uh, two minutes to write down, and it avoids uh, any miscommunication, right? So no one else is going to have to play this matchup because you were the team already had a conclusion. So there's no need to do the work again. So remember, always write stuff down. People need to know what you were doing and what the outcome of that was. Even if you have no conclusions, if it's like, well, I played 10 games of Rogues versus Gruel, I don't really know who wins or what cards are important. Uh, I didn't reach any conclusions, I'm still very much in the dark, need to play more. It's still useful to know what people were doing and uh, what it, we still need to figure out. Right? It is important to know that uh, this was already done and no conclusions were reached yet, uh, rather than just no one did it, right? because it means that things are close, right? as opposed to being a, a lens light for one side or the other. The second big thing to avoid is using too much hyperbole. And this is my biggest pet peeve when it comes to testing with people. And it is honestly the thing that bothers me the most on a teammate, is people that just exaggerate everything. Because it is very important to me 
to know the degree of confidence in your information. So it doesn't mean you have to be right about everything, but it means I have to know if you don't know if you're right. For example, I've had teammates who would go and, you know, someone would be like, okay, let's talk about rogues versus mono red. And then the person would go, oh yeah, I played that matchup. Uh, you know, it was unwinnable for rogues. Didn't win a single game. Mono red was just too fast and had these escape cards. Like, okay, how many games did you play? Four. I was like, well, you know, that is not really that many games to have such a strong opinion, right? So when you say you, you think the matchup is unwinnable and that, you know, you, you played and you didn't win a single game, it gives me the idea that your degree of confidence is much higher than it actually is, which can be quite harmful. Because again, I don't want to duplicate any work, right, as per the previous point. So if you tell me you're sure about something, I'm just going to take it as gospel. I'm going to believe you, unless, you know, it sounds completely off. But I'm, you know, if you're, I'm on a team with you, it's assumed that I trust you somewhat. So if you tell me this is what it is, I'm just going to believe you. I'm not going to do the work again. And if it turns out that your belief was based on three or four games, then we, you might be completely wrong, right? And, and we might miss a big opportunity in testing. And here, it doesn't mean that you can't form opinions with a couple of games played, right? Uh, in, in the end, play testing in Magic is a lot about that, right? It is about forming opinions with uh, small sample sizes, because you're never going to be able to play as many games as it takes to, to be sure about something, right? To be absolutely sure of what happens, you need to play hundreds, thousands of games, and no one has time for that. So, you know, you play a couple games and you form ideas from that. Uh, but the main thing is communicating your degree of confidence accurately. So people don't think that you've played 100 games when you played five, right? So instead of saying this matchup is unwinnable, I didn't win a single game, you can say I played five games, the matchup seemed hopeless uh, because of this, this and this, but, you know, only five games. So other people might want to test it to make sure that it's correct. Uh, and that, that is perfectly acceptable, right? I don't need you to know things for sure. You're allowed to have guesses, you're allowed to have opinions, you're allowed to be wrong. What you can't do is tell me that you're sure or make me believe that you're sure when you have a very weakly fundamented opinion. And this is something that I try to do every single time. I try to really um, convey the idea of my degree of confidence. So I'll be like, I think this is the case, but I'm not sure, right? I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll, I'll write big posts like this was my experience playing this matches, but I'm not confident that this is how the matchup should go. And sometimes I'll be like, no, I played enough. I'm confident that this is the case. And I hope that people believe me, right? Because again, I could be wrong. I'm just human. But if I tell you, no, I know that card X is better than card Z, then this is I strongly, strongly believe that with a lot of evidence, right? This is the same even when I write articles, right? If I write an article, I'll usually say, I think this card is better than this card. Or, you know, I've been liking this card more than this card, but I haven't tested it enough to be sure, right? I will always give you that degree of confidence so that you can trust my opinion. Uh, and if I tell you, I played a lot, this card is better in this lot, or this deck is better, it is because I'm extremely confident that this is the case. It is because I've done a lot of work and I'm telling you, you don't need to do any of this work because I've already done it. I got you covered. And again, might be wrong. I'm human, but this is what I honestly believe. Whereas if I say, you know, I've been liking this card, but I'm not really sure you might want to test it yourself. Then you have to do some of the work yourself, right? This is like a nudge in the right direction. So it's the same thing with articles and with testing teams. It is very important to convey the right degree of confidence in your opinions because some things we're sure about and some things we're just speculating and people on our team need to know which one is which so that they can adapt. The third big mistake is not doing things with a purpose because a lot of the time we have a team and we just play to play. And while in the very beginning that might be useful to figure out you know, how decks work or to, you know, you're maybe a little bit rusty and you just need to get some reps in, uh, this is not the goal of playtesting. The goal of playtesting is to find out specific things. So you need to have questions and reasons to play each matchup. For example, the Gideon example that I gave, right? We had a question. Our question was, we believe that blue-black beats green-white, but there's a chance that with enough Gideon of the trials, uh, you know, if we play four of those and maybe another Gideon, uh, then the matchup swings completely. And this is an important thing to find out because uh, if this is true, we're considering playing green-white. Right, so we specifically want to play this matchup. We specifically want to play post-cyber because we don't care about how game one goes. We already know how game one goes. So this is just 
a session that two people are going to have where they're just going to play this same matchup, sideboarded, and they're going to try to find out if uh, Gideon is good enough to, to win that matchup or not. Right, so that, that is a very specific thing that you're trying to figure out when you play test. And it doesn't need to be this specific. It could be something like, I just wanna see if my brew works, right? Does my deck function? Uh, is it a real deck? Then yeah, I wanna play versus the field, right? Just play stock decks against me and we'll see if my deck can work, right? Or I wanna see if playing four of this card is too many, or I wanna see if this card is good. I wanna see if I can play without this other card. So these are all specific things that you're trying to figure out that uh, make it useful to play test, right? Or, you know, who wins in this matchup? Who wins between mono red and mono white? I don't know, let's test. And is this information important to figure out? Right, that is also one, one key thing because you might be figuring out information that you don't care about. For example, in the green white versus the mirror pact example, it was important for us to figure out who won with the Gideons because if green white won, we were considering playing green white. But imagine a scenario where we think green white is just a bad deck and we're not gonna play it. Uh, and even if it wins that matchup was board, we're not gonna play it. And we're gonna play pack no matter what, right? Whether it beats or, or loses to Gideon, we're gonna play pack because we think people are not gonna play the Gideons. Then why are we playing that matchup, right? Regardless of what we find out, it is not going to impact our choices. So we, you need to be trying to figure something out with a purpose, right? Why do you wanna know this? Like, if you're like, well, I want to know who wins between uh, mono red and mono white. Why? Is this important for you to make a decision, right? If, if mono red wins, what are you going to learn from that? How is that going to affect the outcome of your testing, right? And if mono white wins, how does that change anything? If it changes nothing, then you don't need to play this matchup. And one of the biggest flaws here is when people play brew against brew. Right? It's not that uncommon, you know, especially when we test it in person. Nowadays, it's a little bit harder. But you would walk into a living room and there would be a table and there would be someone playing you know, their pet brew deck that they're trying, trying out versus someone else with a different brew deck. And it's like, well, what are you really learning here? Right? We want to see if these decks are good versus the field. Right? So you can play a brew versus the stock list of every deck. And then you can play the other brew versus the stock list of every deck. But playing one versus the other doesn't accomplish anything because this is not representative what what uh, this decks will, will face, right? So maybe your one brew is just very bad and the other one looks broken by comparison. Uh, or, you know, this brew is very bad versus this other brew, but it's actually very good versus the field. So playing brew versus brew accomplishes nothing and it's something you should avoid almost all the time. And the fourth big thing to avoid is taking things too personal. And this is something that is very hard for a lot of people because we're not used to separating ourselves from our work, right? Uh, we, we take, uh, we incorporate any feedback on our work as if it's about ourselves. So for example, if I make a drawing and you're like, this drawing is horrible. What do I translate that into? I translate that into you are horrible at drawing, right? That is what we normally do as humans. Uh, but with magic, it's not exactly like that. And with drawing, it's not like that either, right? It could just be a bad drawing and you're actually quite skilled. Uh, but especially with magic, um, it is not like this. And people have a very, very hard time internalizing that. So if I look at your deck, I need to be able to say, this is awful. Without you thinking I'm personally attacking you. I need to be able to go, this card makes no sense. Uh, why are you playing this? You know, let's just, you're wasting your time here and stuff like that. Uh... I need to be able to do that without offending you. And that is something that I've actually run uh, into quite a bit <laughs> with a bunch of different teammates, that they just took things too personal. And maybe it is um, I who am a little bit too blunt, right? But I believe that in a testing environment, you can't be walking around, walking on eggshells, right? You, you have to just be able to, to tell the truth. You have to be able to, to say things as you see them without people taking things personal. Because if I tell you this deck doesn't work, like, you know, be, I, I play this deck, it doesn't work, or I'm looking at it and I'm seeing that it doesn't work for this, this, this reasons, you can't be offended by that. You don't have to believe me, but you can't take it as an attack on you because it is not an attack on you. It is an attack on the deck and the deck is not you, even if you built it. And some people will go very far with this because they really want the recognition. They want to feel good about themselves. They want everyone to play their deck and their cards. And they put a lot of their value in their creation, right? So their deck is a reflection of themselves. And if everyone plays it, they've succeeded. If no one plays it, they've failed, right? Uh, so they might 
go to great lengths to convince other people to play their decks. And this is part of why if some, some people tell me this deck that I built is broken, you should play it. I'm just going to blindly believe them. I'm going to, you know, throw everything away and just focus on their deck. And if some people tell me the exact same thing, I'm going to be like, yeah, whatever. You know, I'm going to continue testing my Goblin's deck and I don't care about what you built. Because the people will tell you that they built a broken deck every single time. And you're like, oh, Paula, this doesn't really happen. And you're exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. We've had teammates who literally cheated in testing so that people will play their decks, right? We, we caught people like drawing extra cards because they wanted to prove to everyone that their deck was good. Uh, you no, know, that the deck was winning in testing, so they were cheating to to be able to win on testing. And again, not an exaggeration. This literally happened. So uh, be careful with that, right? Understand that your decks are not a reflection of you. They're not a reflection of your skill, even as a deck builder, not necessarily uh, as a player or your worth as a person, right? You don't have to take things personally. If someone says, "I don't like this deck," it doesn't mean I don't like you. Right? It just means I don't like this deck. And people need to have the freedom to say that on a team. I think it is very important to just be able to say what you think without being afraid of hurting other people's feelings. Obviously, if you attack them directly, then yes, they're going to be hurt. Like You can't be like, everything that you build is bad, you're stupid. You go away. Like This, this is not how it works. Right? But if you tell someone this deck cannot be mono-white, that is not an offense on them. That is just an observation about the deck. That's what I got for today. Uh, if you like my video and want to support my content a little bit more, make sure to check out my Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash pvddr. And special thank you to my biggest supporters, Adam Racing, Adrian Camilleri, Chris, Foxy, Fernando Vizel, Igor Petrov, Joey, Calvin Peng, Kathy Massey, uh, Lawson, Mattia Giardini, Nate, Sylvia Leticia, Thomas Pocorni, uh, and Dimitri. I really appreciate your support, and I'll see you next week.